Maria is not how this is pronounced in English. What am I talking about and why? I'll tell you. I'm Luke and this is Polymathy. Before we get to the Maria Maria question, first I want to tell you about the antenna. Now, what's the plural of that in English? Well, it's antennas or it's antennae, antennae. Well, behind me, of course, is the monument to Guglielmo Marconi, known as the inventor of the radio. So we have our radio antennas, or antennas, or antennae, or antennae, thanks to him. So what is the plural of this word in English, since it's a word taken directly from Latin? Well, pretty much any word that we have taken into English can and probably should be able to adopt the normal grammatical conventions that we have in our language. We form plurals with an S, with almost every single native word in the language. But there are a lot of occasions where scientific and technological terminology has these different kinds of plurals, like supernovae or supernovas. Well, what about cactus is the plural cactuses or cacti? Well, like so many words in English that have words taken directly from Latin, we absolutely can use the Latin plural, cactus, cacti, but it's not necessary. Any word that's been taken into English from a foreign language should really be able to use the normal grammatical plurals that English has. So one cactus, two cactuses, or cacti. Now, I like to say cacti since I enjoy speaking Latin. To that point, though, it's not pronounced cacti in either of the two standard pronunciations of Latin. It's cacti. So how does E become I? Well, that's because words taken from Latin into Old English, for example, winum, wine. So winum comes into Old English, and eventually the root word is just wien. Well, during the great vowel shift, the vowel e, the long e duration sound, it goes from e to i to i to i. So wien, win, wine, wine, wine. So that's how we get wine. And that's also the reason, by convention, long i's that we take, say, even directly from Latin today, we normally pronounce as I. So, cacti. Though, if you want to use the correct Latin pronunciation of the plural, saying cacti, I suppose that's fine. Also, there's the Greek letter phi, or phi. And this term is used a lot in science and geology. And sometimes people like to pronounce it phi because they want to sound more Italian or Greek. And that's absolutely fine. Pronouncing it phi, though, is the normal regular pronunciation of that Greek letter in English for a long time, so that's fine as well. So with antenna, antennae, antennae, well, this is spelled A-E. In Latin, antennae, I. I sounds more like I, so should we say antennae? Well, if you want to be consistent, probably we should use how that vowel changed by the time modern English came around, which would be more like an E sound. You know, we say... Caesar, coherent, inherent, coherent sometimes. That's usually an E or an E sound. So I'm saying antennae or antennae is probably the normal way that should sound, at least in my accent, instead of saying antennae. But if you want to say that, I don't mind. It's a lot of freedom here. English happens to have quite a lot of freedom with uh, these kinds of things. Then there's bacteria, or should I say bacterium? Well, that is the Latinization, this word bacterium, of the ancient Greek bacterion, which means a small rod from bacteria, named after their shape. Since bacteria are so numerous, it makes sense that we have tended to use it as a kind of collective plural, and even to use bacteria as singular, when in reality it is plural. An interesting linguistic phenomenon, which brings us to phenomenon. Phenomenon is singular, and phenomena are plural. And perhaps most enigmatic of all, and not just because it's a really fascinating form of sea life, the octopus. Now, what is the plural of octopus in English? Let's consult the etymology. Well, this is from the Latin octopus, which is just the Latin spelling of the Greek word octopus, with the same pronunciation, which literally means eight foot. Pus is singular for foot, and podes is plural in Greek. That would make this like indices or parentheses. Octopodes. Huh, octopodes, I like that. 
That makes it sound a lot like Socrates. They are very smart, these creatures. I can imagine a comic play written by Aristophanes making fun of Socrates called the Octopodes. Interestingly, though, this is more of a modern Latin term. In ancient Latin, we see polypus much more often. It's from the ancient Greek polypus. What's really interesting is that since this word was adopted into Latin at an early period, it was simply Latinized since the ending sounded more or less like the singular from a second declension noun. So in fact, the plural of polypus in Latin is polypi, in complete defiance of the Greek etymology. Well, that brings us back to octopus. Should we make its plural octopodes, octopi? Well, I think both of those actually are fine. Octopodes is definitely the more etymologically inspired plural, but the Romans themselves have kind of given us the permission to say octopi, and indeed actually to say octopuses. But wait a minute. If you want to learn the correct forms of all the plurals in Latin, well then you should probably take a course at the Ancient Language Institute, this video sponsor. At the Ancient Language Institute, we teach you Latin ancient Greek, Hebrew, and now Old English. You have to check out the first lesson that I have ever taken in Old English from the Ancient Language Institute Old English instructor Colin Gorey. You should see this because it's fantastic. This book that he's writing teaches you Old English in just Old English, and the only way to get access to it is to take the Old English course at the Ancient Language Institute. This is the first book of its kind that teaches Old English in the communicative reading method, the same way as Lingua Latina per se illustrata, Familia Romana, and similar to methods for ancient Greek like Athenase. There's going to be new cohorts for Latin and ancient Greek coming up for the next semester, which starts in January. Registration closes on December 17th. So if you want to learn Latin, ancient Greek, Hebrew, Old English, go to ancientlanguage.com. Latin plurals in English is the reason that words like index, well, they're plural. Normally we say indices. I think saying indexes is just fine. That's an English word. But indices is how we normally make that plural. This is the reason, by the way, that processes or processes is definitely, in my opinion, wrong. It's an attempt to imitate the plurals of other words that come from the third declension in Latin. In this case, though, process or process, processus, that's not a third declension noun, so it can't make that kind of a plural. And that's why saying processes or processes is not correct. Instead, processes or processes, both those pronunciations, follow the normal rules of English and Latin words in English. Then we have words like data and agenda. You can say data too if you like. I like to say data because that's the name of one of my favorite Star Trek characters. So data are plural because a datum or a datum, datum in Latin, that is something given. Thus, it's an information point that has been given. So a datum point, a datum or a datum. And the plural are data. And that's why a lot of scientists like to say the data are. Scientists like to use Latin words a lot. But it's okay, though, to say data is. The data tells us this instead of the data tell us this. Well, why is that okay? Well, we also have the word agenda. It's actually plural. The singular would be agendum, agendum in Latin, and agenda, neuter plural. But interestingly, since the neuter plural looks like the feminine singular, we see many occasions where neuter plurals become feminine singulars, not just in English, but also in Latin itself and even the Romance languages. So that phenomenon of taking a collective term like agenda or data and then making it singular, well, I think that's fine. And then we also have algae or algae or algae or however you like to pronounce it is probably just fine. A singular one would be an alga singular and in Latin alga, algae, that's the singular in the plural. So that's why we say algae. Then, of course, there's fungi in English. Well, this comes from Latin fungus, and the plural is fungi in Latin. Now, if we're talking about fungi, the various kinds of funguses or fungi, that's absolutely fine. Of course, if we're talking about fungi, the Italian word, well, that has to be pronounced like Italian. Finally, 
what is this word Maria that sometimes people say when they're describing the dark spots on the moon? Well, many billions of years ago, those black areas on the moon were actually giant oceans or seas of exposed magma, lava, that was right there. And when early astronomers were looking at the moon, they called them, thinking that maybe they were water, such as the seas on the earth, they called them in Latin, maria. The singular is mare. It's a neuter word, and the plural is maria, not maria. That's, of course, a name, whereas Maria in English, Maria, that's the plural. Now, if you want to say singular, mare, to describe this kind of geological phenomenon on other worlds, and make the plural mares, that's fine by me. A maria, well, that's the plural of it. To my ears, maria, or even certainly maria, being used as the singular, that doesn't work at all. I would recommend just mare, mares, or mare, maria. The same way we say supernova, supernovae, and antenna, antennae. Thanks so much for watching. Valete. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba-ba.